Welcome to the sixth episode of What A Shout, brought to you by The Racing Post with all the big calls and all the big races. I'm JJ Hamlet and I'm joined by my co-host, the one, the only, Dave Orton. How's everything, Dave? Ding, ding. Round five, is it now, I think? Round five. getting used to this, wasn't you? I am, yeah, yeah. I'm getting used to it now. We have another belter of a show coming up. Kills is in his back in the studio, going to point us all the way of the form. And we are, like to say, we're absolutely delighted to have a man synonymous with national hunt rating. Uh, and I've got to get this right, Peter, because you, I believe you're a champion jockey eight times. We know this. But it's your amount of winners that we need to have a look at here. 1,692 winners in his career. That was a record at the time. It has, of course, since been surpassed, surpassed by a certain AP McCoy. 13 of those were at the Cheltenham Festival. Uh, the man, the legend that is, Peter Scudor, MBE. Now, the reason why I said we had to check that, because your Wikipedia page doesn't count the Irish winners. You were also saying you have winners in Norway. Where do we stop with this? Well, I rode with JJ's father in Norway, and I was at my very best in Norway, and nobody ever saw it. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> except your father. There's probably a very good reason <laughs> for that. Time, yeah. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Kills, full of yourself? Uh, no, I wouldn't quite say full of myself. I had one of my worst weekends uh, uh, last week. but you know, We, we, we know how that back, works, though, don't we? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The ups and Thanks downs. And Absolutely. What have we got coming up, JJ? So on the show today, we have the hot topic. We'll be talking about Richard Johnson and his recent injury. We'll be looking at the Cheltenham Festival clues from the weekend, social questions to Peter, and a look at the very best races at the weekend. So the hot topic of the day, we're going to talk about the recent Richard Johnson's injury and will he miss Cheltenham? And of course, what does it mean um, at this time for, for a jockey to be injured? You're, you're very correct in talking about this time because uh, I think that's the biggest hindrance for him as far as being champion jockey. I How great I was. I broke my leg <laughs> early in, uh, in November, but the seasons went on longer then. We went to the beginning of May. So that gave me chance to come back and be champion jockey. Um, very, very funny <laughs> piece in the Telegraph uh, on uh, Friday about... Uh, you were mentioned this. Go on, go on. Yeah, you do it. Yeah. Frank, Frank, I was close to him in a championship and uh, I fell and I, I broke my arm, same as Richard did. And uh, John rang up my dad and said, he's a useless jockey, he'll never be champion jockey again. And... Uh, I'm going to stop riding when I equal with him. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and history knows that you would have won another seven times. So. Yeah. Well, anyway, so he did that, but I did the same as John, as Richard. Uh, broke my leg. I uh, broke my arms, so I can't get my arms from my legs. But I, I'm not sure. It depends which bone you've broken and, and how you've done it. But I remember laying in the hospital there. I don't, you, it depends which surgeon you get as to how quickly you get back. I, oh, we and I broke. That. You know, I, I broke my arm, and he said, "I put." The surgeon came in next morning, my arm was up like that, and he said, um, I want you moving it straight away. And I said, that, that, you know, it's broken, what do you mean move it? He said, no, I want you moving it straight away. And so you're with a plate in it, you're, you're not with a plaster on, your elbow's moving, so he had me moving it straight away. He said, actually, you could go back and ride straight away. He said, your arm is now as strong as it ever was. But if you break it, then the trouble is every time we open it up, it's, it's, it's the problem of infection in it. So... You're getting Richard, queasy kills over yeah, there. Getting, yeah. oh, I had one broken bone in my life and I bawled my eyes out about 12 hours solid. But, <laughs> they don't so make them like they used to, do they? <laughs> oh, yeah, but um, McCoy broke his back on a white classic, white classic day and he got back oh, in time for Cheltenham. That was and horrific. Like, all these it? cryo chambers and all that. I don't know whether that's you know, possible for Johnson to do it. Is he out of Cheltenham? Th that's uh, the big question, isn't it? He'll do everything he can to get there. But I mean, I can well, tell you, I'm not a doctor. How many weeks? 40, it's 46 days. I, I'm a jump jockey. How many, how many weeks? Like, near, yeah, just under seven weeks. Yeah, but well, he, he could be back in six weeks, I reckon. Yeah. We're, we're, given, <laughs> we're given, given luck. The closest I that, ever got yeah. to missing Cheltenham, you see, in my day, we were a lot tougher. Your dad's day, we were a lot tougher <laughs> people. I put a fella through the wing at Newbury and uh, they banned me for three weeks and then I nearly missed Cheltenham. That was a proper day's racing, you see. None of this bloody... Just quickly, from a punting it. perspective, Kills, what does it mean if you're looking at Johnson's rise, you think... I'm never, getting, I'm never getting involved in punting on jockeys' titles again because that day uh, Peter Scudamore broke his leg at market racing in November whenever it was on black humour uh, we were all at market racing that day we had a right lump on um, Richard Dunwoody at 8 to 1 and he came back and did us and, uh, you know so uh, look Brian Hughes is obviously strong strong favourite now 33 I mean, to 1 so on you, yeah. you can't back him but you, you know he's got to get through, through the season injury free as well and um, the fact that I said it's later in the season so Richard's exactly. got less time to recover it look stranger things have happened you know yeah, but he's, he's up against it. He's up against it. That'll be a big narrative coming up to Cheltenham. 
Okay, time to look at some Cheltenham Festival clues from last weekend. Really bubbling up now, chaps, isn't it? Defy de Soy, Under So. It was billed as a match. We had four ticks. Patrick Munnins in the studio last week for Under So. Paul, what went wrong there? Was Defy just a real deal? Uh, yeah, I think he was. Uh, definitely didn't go fast enough. I mean, we, we've seen that with, with Mick Fitz on, uh, on, on At The Races, showing that... Um, how slow they went in comparison to the two and a half mile chase. Yeah, that was a good it piece. doesn't matter. The horse jumped really, really well. He's obviously, you know, they thought he was a two and a half miler last year, and he, he's obviously got loads of speed. Um, you can hold the form back. Mar Maracuja holds the form back. How they put him up eleven pound, I don't know. When they go that slow, yeah. the, the the lesser horses can't actually get beaten as far as they should do. Bit of a red herring on there. the ratings, yeah. So, but even so, he's he's the horse to beat now. Uh, which is, I mean, I've been all over Chuck and Bossoir for ages, but I mean, Deffy's undoubtedly the horse to beat. Defi de yeah, it's fascinating what you say about timing. You know, I watched through watching through the race. I thought Defi de So was beat coming up the hill for a time. He's off the bridle, but the really good horses, as JG will tell you, when you run these good horses, when they hit a hit a point, they pick up the bridle again, and that's what very much impressed me with Defi de So. I, you know, I don't get this time stuff. I thought, despite you know, it might have have suited the other horse better than Defi de So. The horse I very frightened of is. Uh, uh, Mullins' his other horse. Chac and Poussoir. I couldn't think of it. I can't pronounce it or say its name. Chac and Poussoir. Uh, I mean, that looks the real deal. I mean, Kills has got a tattoo of that on his back. Yeah. Now, by the way. <laughs> I mean, this, if you want to read it, it's after the show. It's, it's a funny, you know, I think we're living through a time of absolutely top class steeplechase. And, you know, we talk about in my days or going back to the sea pigeons and night nurses. I think we're coming to another time of superlative. Uh, Jump racing and these three mm. horses in the champion chase could be the real deal. And what about Pentland Hills? Obviously, pipped on the line. Um, oh. Is the champion hurdle weak when if Pentland Hills is now eight to one? One oh one. Can I just jump in? That? Uh, some of that was my money as well. Got to say. <laughs> I was on before. When he went two to one, oh, I had to back him. I thought he'd won all the way. Uh, yeah, I thought. Yeah, I thought he'd won as well. I thought he'd won as well. But the photo finish shows you, don't know. The print tells the truth. No, I'm not sure that line straight kills. Going back to this, in my you, you know better than me. In my humble opinion, it's very you've got to be a great champion as a five-year-old to win a champion hurdle. Yes. I think the four-year-olds, yeah. yeah. the, the triumph hurdle yeah. horse is coming through yeah. uh, are badly handicapped and uh, it's difficult for them. Look, he, he still can win the champion hurdle, <laughs> but you, as a punter, you'd want your money in your pocket yet because you want to know. see the Irish trials. We've got well, honey we've got Irish, running. We've got Irish trial, Irish trial come, but I mean, I couldn't have him. I mean, I didn't think the, the triumph hurdle hasn't, form hasn't worked out at all well. And here he is, the winner. He, remember, he was 20 to one. Sir Eric sadly lost his life and that race was a short price favour. And he's lost, he's lost both races this year. Mm. I mean, proper champion hurdle horses win those win those sort of races on the bridle. He didn't. He's only small. Now He does jump really well, doesn't he? That's yes, one but we have a say. situation where we've got a small horse from off the flat and we're probably going to have the biggest feel for the champion hurdle, at least since Punjabi, when I think there was 18. Uh, possibly going further back, there was 23. Can't remember who won it that year. But we're going to have a massive field because anybody who's got a horse in one, one, mid 150s, two mile hurdle is going to say, "What? Well, I got a chance here. Is this horse, a hold up horse, a small horse off the flat, going to be able to bully his way through from the back? Cannot have him. Cannot have him. Clearly, one. I don't think you can't. You can't not. You can't say can't win, but you just don't want to be take. You know, you're a brave man to be laying it for a lot of money. I mean, yeah, but the thing, you know, we're going to get soft ground at Cheltenham on the opening day, or the soft side of got the soft. Remember what happened to Crybenzis? Just wasn't tough enough that yeah, year, was yeah, it? But, you know but I mean? I, it, it and he was a miles yeah, better it horse. It depends on what he's taken on. We haven't seen. That. My argument is, let's see the whole picture. We've seen a little mm. bit of the jigsaw. Mm. We'll we'll see a couple mm. of Irish trials, a couple more trials, and then we'll have a better picture. Mm. Okay, well, you're talking about pocket. you're talking about ground on the first day. I was tempted to just sit back and let you have a go, then, lads. <laughs> but you're talking about uh, the first day. Willie Mullins comes out after uh, uh, Thiessy's day. The Galmoy, of course, at Thurlis yesterday, we saw a talking about serious performance, one of the performances of the season so far. Benny did you? Or will she run on the opening day when it's softer ground in the mares, or will he take the plunge and go with Apple Jade? She didn't manage to do it in the stairs. Uh, he's almost certain to go for the mares. Uh, that's the way she want to win. That's the way she should have won last year if she hadn't have fallen. Um, he's already said yesterday that it's the softest ground you're likely to get is on the Tuesday, uh, and he thinks it's very important to it. He also says that he thinks it's uh, is she probably the best, you know, could be the best mare she's trained. And when you consider that uh, uh, Annie, what Annie Power did, I mean, you know, she looked fantastic, didn't it? We might actually have a situation where a mare sidesteps the mare's race for the easier option of the champion hurdle. How about that? Wow. Honeysuckle. Let's see what happens with her on Sunday.
it's, listen, it's some big shouts and some big calls. That's what we love here. We've gone way over our quota. Time to move on. So this part, we're going to ask Peter. People want to know on social media questions to Peter. So first one, we're going to ask Michael Williams wants to know, how difficult was it to retain the Jockeys' Championship? Well, Richard's proven, you know, you've got to stay sound, isn't it? I mean, from my point of view, I remember when I was riding, I was champion jockey before I went to Martin Pipe, and then I thought, if I want to do it a few times, I've got, you've got to position your stables in... It, so you, you, you can ride them. I knew that Martin Pipe, I was going to ride for Fred Winter and Martin Pipe, and I thought Martin Pipe would provide me a few winners early on this season. Not Fred difficult Winter. then. Not <laughs> then, 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 we, then we got to Christmas, we had had 50 winners over hurdles, and I thought, this man could train a bit. I don't think I need to go anywhere else. So you, know, you look at Brian Hughes, what he's done up north. He's, he's got Donald McCain, he's got Nicky Ritchie, he's got a lot of little yeah. stables around. He's positioned himself into doing So he's, he's laid the platform for to be champion jockeys. So you lay the platform and you stay injury free. Injury free, well, you know, it, it's very difficult. Do you think it's more difficult up north? I know Brian Hughes doing a great job, but do you think it is more difficult up yeah, north? Yeah, there isn't the racing up the north. I've, it, Brian, to his credit, will probably will be the first champion jockey since yeah. John Joe O'Neill. And John Joe came down south. And Brian, a, a lot of the time, so I mean, Brian isn't coming south. I don't think Brian gets the credit for what no. he... His skill to me, I mean, he's brilliant over offensive, but you watch him ride and finish. Any young man watching, watch him how he gets... The, whole, you, the flat racing boys do it. He rides like a flat racing boy, gets them up and running. He's brilliant. Yeah, as a punter, it's always good to see him on the back of a horse when it kills. And also, Tony Hopkins wants to know, if you could ride any horse at Cheltenham this year, what would it be? It's funny, um, making the story bigger. I was at Aintree last year, I watched Min and Kenboy. I thought I watched, you know, we we'll go back in time and when you talk about Night Nurse and as I said, see Pigeon these horses, and you think, gosh, those are the golden era of steeplechase. And I thought I saw one of the best performances of steeplechase in those days watching Min and Kenboy. Kenboy only just beat uh, the Gold Cup winner three or four lengths at Punchestown, so there's not a lot between them. But I think Kenboy, they're only young horses. If he jumps around this year, I think he won a Gold Cup. I never won a Gold Cup. I would like to ride Kenboy and win a Gold Cup. Kenboy. What would you say? Was the best ride you ever gave a horse? One day in Norway, nobody ever saw it. <laughs> One day in the fall, I don't like McCoy, and nobody ever saw it. I tell you what, I, I tell you what there, there is one, uh, an, an obvious one. It was the Witcher alignment of its day. Go on. Uh, but that's a boy in the 1989 racing post chase. Yeah, Could not go a that's... yard on the first circuit. Even, yeah, even the commentator is saying, one paced in fourth between the last two, <laughs> uh, you know. But he gets him up on the line. Uh, go and watch it. It's on YouTube. 1989 racing post chase. Right. You have been told. They're just <laughs> dropping out of the bottom. There, no. For those of us older than JJ, we all remember Bonanza Boy. Okay, then let's have a look at the first of the big races. It's Chapman Trials Day, of course. The last chance to have a spin around Presbury Park before the festival. And three o'clock, the Ballymore Novice Hurdle, not the big one, of course. This is the Grade Two Trials. Been won by some real top notches, isn't it, Paul? In the last decade, Bobsworth won it for Henderson. Henderson, of course, is on a hat trick. Santini and uh, Birchdale last year. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we had um, I can't remember uh, at Fisher's Cross at beat the new one. Correct. Yeah, and, uh, agree and with they the both went on to win at the festival. So yeah, very good race. Uh, oh, come in there. So come on. Do you know, one of the biggest, you better than me, but one of the biggest changes that I've seen this season has become more apparent is that it was all looked at the Chelton trials for the March festival. Now we have to look at Ireland. It's, it's the best horses are coming out of Ireland. They are. They are. Um, it doesn't always happen, though. I mean, look. It, I'm not saying it always know. happens, but it, it's become more apparent this season. Of course. I watched uh, the other challenges. Yeah. I thought, yeah, you see that, that's good. What's happened in Ireland? Of course, yeah. You do, you know, you, you have to pay far more attention than you used to. I mean, years ago, they would win two or three races when yeah. you were riding, wouldn't they? But now they. And we didn't know what was happening years win. ago because, no. you know, you only had it, you saw the results in the sport and life. It wasn't on television, but you're watching mm. these and you see yeah. the. You know, it, it, it's hardly news, the power of the Irish well, stables are well, so massive. On that point, let's have a look at. At the runners, King Roland. We think he'll probably be favourite because sporting John for Philip Bowles doesn't go. We should say Harry Senior was due to run at Warwick. Time flies by for Team Henderson. House Island, I know also you've got a bit of time for. Uh, well, yeah, but he, he, you know, as it stands, House Island has the best form in the race. He was second to win Relo in the winter novices hurdle, uh, also called the Ballymore, I think, at Sandown. Uh, wasn't beaten fast, seven lengths clear of the third. On official ratings, he's rated 143. King Roland has won 3 3. The only thing is, King Roland has, has run once, uh, sorry, twice over hurdles. Um, the first time was uh, Newbury against Son of Camas. Son of Camas won a length. Now, yeah. he's, he's well regarded, Son of Camas. He'd all, he was also race fit, having won a bumper at the previous meeting. King Rowland then came out. He won as easy as you like next time. He, he was bought. Record, he was bought. I'm not sure about that because uh, the ground would have been soft enough for him to do that, I would have thought. Uh, but he um, he was bought to replace Neon Wolf. Yeah. 
same uh, goes, Master Nolan. And he is really, really well regarded, and uh, his, his bumper form was very good. How is he going to get up the hill? He wears a hood, isn't he? And he is a little bit of a keen type, isn't he? Uh, that would yeah. be the one. They've kept him to Utoxa until he gets into Exeter. Yeah, well, Exeter is stiff. It is stiff, but they're not going to be facing It's, it's, it's level of competition. No, I, I, would, I would say Exeter was a yeah. stiff track. Let's Chelsea. get some cool. selections for this, if we can, then, chaps. Um, uh, I'm a King Roland fan. I think he's going to prove a lot better than, than he's shown so far. That'll do for me. King Roland? King Roland, yeah. Harry Fry thinks a lot of this horse. Um, I don't know if he did break the course record, so I might be totally wrong there, but um, yeah, King Roland for me. Yeah, I think Harry Senior will run a big race. So the next race we're going to look at is the Doncaster Sky Bet Handicap Chase Listed Race. What's everyone's thoughts on this one? Corenta. I like Corenta. I like, he's not near the... It, it, it's a John Joe horse. We should say uh, that Dingo Dollar leads the market, beating in the race last year. You like uh, Corenta. I quite like him on that Kempton run as well. Yeah, it was a bit, bit unlucky at Kempton. Yeah, he might. Have I think I mean, he's better going left handed as well. It, it was a good race. I mean, there's a horse I like at Cheltenham, Highway 101. He ran in that. Um, Chris Gordon. I also. thought he was going to. I thought he was going to win all the way. Highway 101 didn't quite stay. But yeah, that 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 was a good race. It's a good line of form. Obviously, Dingo Dollar's running two um, Ladbrokes trophies. We need to call them now, and he's run well both times. Yeah, yeah, it's fifth last time. Uh, he went off favour for this race last year off St. Mark. Um, what went wrong? Well, they held him up. Uh, which is weird. And they said afterwards we got the tactics wrong. He likes to go. He likes to go from the front. He's got good form at Doncaster. Um, another one I'm interested in. Though, a much bigger price. Just struck me. I almost forgot about him. Solomon uh, Gray. This is a horse you often have a. Well, I was with, isn't all it? over him at Kempton uh, over Christmas, and he was taken out because of the ground. Now he doesn't want the ground too fast. Now it's funny. We'd no idea what the ground is going to ride like at Doncaster. I totally agree. The going stick today is a point higher than it was in February last year when they were calling it good to firm last year and it's good to soft, soft in places today. So who knows where it's going yeah. to ride like. But the quicker it rides, the better it'll be for that horse. He does have to prove he stays three mile, but he's a half-brother to a more Lato who won a decent race of a three mile of sand down. What about think, um, so, Nicky Anderson, uh, Bur Bur Burbank? What's your thoughts on I that? Think, was it impressive enough at Newbury last time? It was Very. impressive enough. It was a novice. Um, I think it's high enough in the weights for what he's done there. He's been called a few names as well, hasn't he? This yeah. he's, he has now got him back rolling. In that uh, Corenta race was Cobra de Maya as well, who's been an anti-post plunge for this. Uh, if you look at the run back, he, it's fair to say he wasn't given the hardest time. I think we can say that. He was creeping back into it. He needs better ground. He wants to go this way around, I think. And he's now £5 better off with Corenta as well. So yeah. well, he's a sneaky William Marshall on him takes off £7. He rode him last I'm, time. I'm just as interested in the fact that Bridget Andrews is on Solomon. Okay, so let's get some selections. Paul? Uh, I'll go Solomon at a price. Solomon Gray? Corenta. I'm sticking with Burbank. I think Corenta might just hold, uphold that form as well. Okay, time for David Jennings and Gavin Lynch. Ding, ding, round two of their big calls for the week. Let's see what the lads have got to say. Gavin, I have found the 2020 Cheltenham Gold Cup winner. Good man. He goes by the name Clanders Oboe. Clanders Oboe? No. Can't have him. Can't have him? No, not from Five of Cheltenham. Okay, well let me explain. This is why everybody's saying about Clanders Oboe. Not from Five of Cheltenham. It's the sexy argument. He can't win, he's not from Five of Cheltenham. First run was in the juvenile hurdle, he was second. Second run was in the triumph hurdle. You can forgive any horse in their juvenile season. Third run, beaten just about by Whisper in the dipper. Really good run. Second off top weight in the Caspian Caviar Gold Cup. Another solid run, raw horse. Last year's Gold Cup, I thought everything went wrong. I thought he went after Native River and my by too early. He was the one that brought the pack to the two of them, okay? okay? The third last was bypassed. He had a lovely position on the inside. He was shuffled all the way outside the fence, then had to come back in. Then Harry Cobden had to go for the gap on the home turn, and he had to work really hard to get into a challenging position. I thought at Kempton in the King George, he looked a different horse. He won the race by 21 le lengths. Yes, the race fell apart, but he's a different horse now. He's older, he's stronger. I think he can get up that hill. I can't believe there's still some nine to one available about Clanders Oboe. I think he's the most likely winner of the Gold Cup. Can't have him, he's better right-handed. He beat Surname, who looked tired, and Footpad, who we saw how good he was. He won by 21 lengths. Yeah, but no, he's, he's better right-handed. He won't win the Gold Cup. The winner of the Gold Cup will be last year's winner. Album photo. Yes. I think that form could be reversed. Why? Because, as I said, we not listened to me. Everything yeah, went just... wrong in the race last year. Uh, well, even for Alboom Photo, he didn't. Uh, he got shuffled back to last at the first. He had to jump over Patrick Mullins on the ground at halfway. He ended up bolting in. Uh, he won. He went six, seven lengths clear. Come to the last, he won by say three or four at the end. Uh, to me, he's a fresh horse. He went to Tremor again. He deserves to be favourite. He's got no excuses. Left-handed, right-handed. I think he'll win. Okay. Well, Clan Zobo is twice the price of Alboom Photo, and I think that's value. So, pro Clan Zobo. The question is, are we? Uh, no. No, I don't really see it. I mean, yeah, he looked fantastic in the King George, but neither surname nor footpad stayed. We know that because of how slowly they finished. Um, 
I don't see any reason why he's any better than last year. I thought I think he wants to go right-handed. If you if you watch that goal cut from last year, he seems to make more effort with his jumping there than he did at Kempton. He went out to his right a few times. And, you know, having travelled well for a long way at the top of the hill, he was done for. I know he kept coming back into it, but he was done for. It was a big gamble, if you remember, on the week, and then it rained on Gold Cup Day, didn't it? And Paul Nichols said he drifted right out. Uh, Garen, Paul was really, Garen was really sticky at Kempton. Is Christmas. he a stronger horse this year, Peter? That's what I would say to your eyes. Does he, does he look stronger? I mean, he came on so much from down royal, didn't he, to that race? Yeah, obviously. I mean, it goes back to my point earlier. I mean, how good are these trials in England now compared to the Irish trials? The Irish didn't come across for the Betfair chase. They didn't come across for the King George. I don't think they'd have run the King George. You felt bad, bad, but yeah. Yeah, you, know, you, know, you, you are got, talking about got stuff, yeah. you know. So the top horses are not coming across for the thing. So while the King George historically is the best trial for the Gold Cup, I just think, alluding to what I touched on earlier, that we are actually now changing a little bit. The Irish have got the best trials. So, I mean, yes, Clans is over. You've got to respect because of history. But I think there's better horses in the race. JJ, are you laying him as well? I am, yeah. Based on that, yeah, I am. Four lays for the clan. So it's now time for the My Racing Double. The Paddy Power Cotswold Chase, Bristol de May, and the Cleve Hurdle, Paisley Park. Best of luck to them. Time for another big race then, because at 2.25, it's the Cotswold Chase, a big trial, if you like, for the Gold Cup itself. And we see the return of Santini, Paul. Now, I know you're not a fan of this horse, so <laughs> it, is it a case of it's just a straight match between him and Bristol Demire, or are there others in Might there? Might not necessarily be. I bet you can't guess when the last, you know, this is a grade two chase, that always has a small field, but you can't guess when the last favourite won it. Ooh. Celtic shot. <laughs> <laughs> Not as far back as that, but it was 1999. <laughs> was it really? Uh, Cypher Morphe. You think yeah. a smad place, don't you? Many clouds of yeah. that. Yeah, know, so quite... look, on form, Santini doesn't deserve to be favourite. I mean, he's, he's coming Morton. out was of really? Cypher Morphe, 1999. But, uh, but yeah, on form, Santini doesn't deserve to be favourite. I mean, obviously, he's coming out of his novice campaign, so he hasn't had the chance to rate really highly, but it was a really disappointing run that day at Sandown. I always, I don't know about you, but I always think that if a horse needs three mile really early in its in its life... It's basically a four mile. It's <laughs> going to be too slow for the top races. Yeah, you have a point. I, I don't dismiss Santini. I think he's a good horse. He's got a bit of class. He was second in the big race RSA, the RSA yeah. last year when he was um, probably wasn't right. So I, I don't dismiss him. Henderson's got great talent to bring him back. And I very much respect Bristol de May. I think he'll do you know. But it's interesting. I'll, I'll throw another pointer in it. Being a northerner now, that I look at horses, Chidswell, Chideswell in the Doncaster race, yep. Topville Ben here. I think you can sometimes go and get a bit of value for backing the unfashionable, north is unfashionable horses. And what is, is that a true point? Yeah, I think it can. I, I think it definitely can be. Yeah, I mean, tactically, he's um, an interesting horse, isn't he? Because he's gonna, he, yeah, he's yeah, gonna yeah. be up there. We think and Bristol would be up there trained, as well. But, you know, you know, Phil Kirby's was... having a fantastic run. He was Southern trained. He'd be two points short. He is. He is. A, you know, he's a very good horse. I mean, I was all over him for the for the Charlie Hall, funny enough, and he didn't show his form as well. But he, he obviously needed time to get fit and get to himself. And when he yeah. won the when he won the Roll of Merrick, I mean, he actually won it very very easily. Only issue with him is does he want a flat track? Because we didn't being find out Aintree, really in the RSA, Aintree Aintree did we? Last year, RSA he came down earlier. Yeah. Back to for the RSA. Yeah, it's because he went to Carlisle. So, as you want to Carlisle, so I, mean, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I always think that's a funny thing, flat tracks and stuff. It, sometimes the jumping can be. A, mm. Yeah, we well, fell that jump. Yeah, Cheltenham's yeah, so. jumping is unique. The hills, the thing. You know, it's funny you talk about the hill at Cheltenham. It's not that steep. You know, know, you, 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 gotta, yeah, you don't want to run over yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on. That's, 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 that's a bit of a difference. Peter sprinting up it, isn't there? So let's have a selection from this race, guys. Uh, uh, we've got uh, the Labbrooks Trophy winner in there, uh, Durasha County. Do we give him a chance? Uh, I'd give him a chance. He's another one who uh, he's another one who'll be up with it. I am gonna take a chance on an outsider here. He's got no chance on form, but um I've always thought Mr. Whitaker wanted to go up the three miles and and he'd improve for it. Hmm. Um, he ran one. He ran once last year in the Ultima, I think, but he was beaten before halfway. Um, yeah. He's a half mile at Broadway Buffalo, who was obviously second in a four mile or so. I think you know. I think he's going to stay. He can't win on form. He needs him to run below form. But but um, Bristol De Meyer was uh, beaten favourite in this race a couple of years ago, beaten by a couple of horses rated way below him. So uh, it's one of those races you get funny results in it time and time again. Okay, so a complete flyer for Paul. We've Peter. done all good punters, don't we? We mentioned most horses in the race, so if somebody comes to us after and says you didn't mention the winner, we can't say that we haven't, can we? <laughs> well, we haven't he has a habit of doing this, I'd say, successfully. <laughs> all right, we haven't mentioned Slate House. 
<laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay. Bristol Demay. Bristol Demay. Two ticks Bristol, of Bristol Demay because you're, you're big time there. What has finished the third in the Gold Cup, of course. I'm going to be unpopular. I've got a feeling Santini's just going to get over the line here. That's the Cotswold chase. So the next race we're going to look at is the big cleave hurdle. Uh, obviously, we've got Paisley Park in this. Um, Peter, do you think it's a worry that is intended, intended engagement at Christmas? Um, obviously, he was supposed to go for that and he didn't. And uh, do you think that's yeah, a little bit of a worry? Do you think it was too heavy for him, wasn't it? Um, no, he missed two because he was going to go somewhere. That was off. They reran the race at Ascot and, and he didn't run because it was too heavy. No, I wouldn't. You know, there, there'll be... This time of year, funny, is is a good time to run them for the trials for, for the Chelsea, you know, within, within, within a couple of weeks or so. I wouldn't be too worried. I was an idiot last year. I said I didn't think Pasty Park would win the Stayers hurdle <laughs> for the very point that I talked about earlier, that he, he races off the bridle and the yeah. good horses will race off the bridle and pick up. And that's what he does. Uh, and you remember the great horse of Paul Nichols, so great, I can't remember his name. But he used to do the same, race off, race off the bridle, and then they pick up. And these really, really good horses do it. And Paisley Park does it. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a race that I was quite against bringing in uh, because I thought that, you know, they should be running the Champ Nerdle or something else, these horses. But um, it's a great race. It's producing great horses. And Paisley Park is a, a very, very good stayer. And multiple winners. You mentioned Big Bucks. He won this a couple of times. The Cleve Hurdle of this day is the race that tends to show your follow-up yeah, winners, exactly. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, of course it is. Yeah, I mean... Um, he won it last year, you know, of course. But yeah, he won it last year. Big Bucks won it. Um, yeah, you know, in the in the year before he went, I think he went off six to one, something like that, for for Cheltenham after winning the Cleve Hurdle. So, uh, so yeah, it's it's the right race to run in. I mean, he only he only won big, he only didn't run at Ascot because of the ground. I mean, I think he'd have just jogged around and won and won there anyway. To be honest, but you know, if they want to be safe, let them be safe. The ground is drying out at Cheltenham; it'll suit. He, you know, he added another string to his bow at Newbury when he won because that was a really steadily run race, and he had to quicken rather than come from off a really strong pace, which was just yeah. a highlight of his season last year. So. He's got it all. He's got a very good horse to beat in if the cap fits, probably better uh, than the ones he was beating in the Cleve last year, for sure. And what about last year? Is this a horse that, as we saw at Aintree, is top-notch, isn't he, on his day? We saw it, of course, you know, in the Ascot Hurdle, where he looked off the bridle all the way, coming up the hill. He looks like he wants three miles. Is this the horse that he's yet to be tested against? Uh, yeah, th yeah. This is, th this is another question. He's still got the best form. Uh, uh, and... If the cap needs, if the cap fits, needs to step up again. Um, if there is a horse in Britain that can step up and three mile staying hurdles, that it's him. So it'll be an interesting race. This is an absolutely fascinating match race. Of course, there are plenty of others in there, but we think this is how it's going to line up. Coming to two out, what sort of price are you got? What sort of price ball would you be with Baisley Park at? Yeah, see, it is one of those things. I don't bet odds on. I mean, I you know, I don't. I, I wouldn't have two hundred okay, so, to win a hundred on anything. But where would you Not steer me. someone and say that I mean, looks like a bit of value to a, me? He's a two to one on shot all day. He's a two to one on shot all day long, I think. Okay. Uh, and any bigger than that is probably fair value. Any under two to one on? Would you be having a little? Yeah, I mean, I think there's always a good. price that you have to decide. Like, well, I'm going to lay this. It's too short. There always is. So, I mean, if he's two to five, one to three, then you know, if you if that way inclined, I'll just watch the race. But I mean, I'd be I'd be a layer that sort of price. Yeah. Mm, very interesting. If the cap fits, could he be one of the each way thieves bets of the weekend? Right then, time for the Naps, a weekend winner. And chaps, we've got to bounce back a little bit. We had a great penultimate week. Mine fell early on, I know that. It was awful. Well, a week to forget, so perhhaps I'll get in first. One ten at Lingfield, I think entangling on the sand. We'll get back to winning ways for David Ellsworth. JJ Hamlet, a winner. I've gone for Bristol de May. Um, it's second behind Lost in Translation last time at Haydock. Um, Twiston Davis did say that he the ground was a little bit against him that day. I know, obviously, Paul mentioned that he has won on quicker ground before, um, but he does love the soft ground, and um, I think he might have just needed it that day as well. Bristol de May for JJ. Peter Scudamore, a weekend right. winner. Lucinda and I send two down to your talks, a little double, little each way do double, Charmix and haul us in at your talks. It's like you going to the sand. We're struggling a bit, digging ourselves out. <laughs> I'm going to the sand at Lincoln. For it, struggling? It? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Keeley. Right, yeah, there's a horse running in the 115 at Cheltenham called Imperial Aura. I'm hoping that he will do what Mr. Whitaker did a couple of years ago, win that and then go on and win the Close Brothers. He's rated 136, needs to go up to get him in, to get in. But he was running all over Pim. Uh, over three mile at Cheltenham last time, and he just didn't stay. Uh, Pim was rated 149. He only got beat six lengths anyway, uh, but didn't stay. He's in this race off 136. He's miles better than that. Four selections, hoping we'll be rich rather than a ditch. So it's now time for the big call. Something we all fancy or something we'd like to see change in racing. Pete, I know you've got a really good one here. Well, it's not good. It's an old... 
uh, chestnut, really. I, I, I hate this um, going at the stick all the time. We, we had a chat before, and you know, they're air cushion sticks. What are you going to do to make a horse go quicker if you're not hitting it with a stick? You're going to kick it. I mean, which, which, which do they prefer? I don't think the welfare of the horse is in any way protected by not using the stick. We wrote, you, I wrote with your father in Scandinavia where the, where the stick was taken. You, you, you have to do everything else. You have to bounce it. Was that another thousand there. winners over there, Bob? That was another <laughs> thousand winners. Norway, Scandinavia. If they took the Norwegian winners in, I'd be in front of McCoy. But they, they are. <laughs> Don't say no, that. But, but you, know, you have to do it. You have to wiggle around and you have to kick them and, and you're the, they have to ride like this to... I think as well, the people which are complaining don't understand that the actual whip with th which they've designed doesn't actually hurt the horse. It's so so well padded, yeah. and it's the noise that they can hear. It's we had one the, in the office years ago. It's more when, when, when the noise. When the air when I first come out, right, yeah. and I was letting people hit me across the chin as hard as they could. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I, I think it's on the floor. Uh, <laughs> yeah. no, to me, not, you know, it's, it, it's, it's just, not all, you know, the stick is a part the pro used course, correctly. The mm. stick is a skill in to encourage the horse yeah. to, to go forward. I, we're never trying to, you know, I think when I, you know, when I first came in the ring, Lester was the great man and we all copied him. But then we realised that there is other ways to, to make them go forward. And I think the, the stick is part of the skill. It doesn't hurt a horse. So stick horse. with the stick. Stick with a stick. Stick with a stick. Paul Keeley, big shout. Yeah, well, I'm going to do what I do every week when I'm on here, and it's give you another Cheltenham winner with a bit of luck. I was so impressed with Shiskin last week at Newby. He was so fast from the last to the line, you wouldn't believe. That was uh, that was the slowest ground Newby have raced on this season. Heavy heavy ground, probably wasn't quite that bad. But uh, there's been 22 hurdle races at Newby uh, this season. Right, The other three on that card were easily the slowest from the last of the line. Right. Shishkin was the fourth fastest, right? and every other meeting was ground was miles faster than it was there. He's a really, really fast horse, and he's going to win the Supreme for Nicky Henderson, Oof. who Sweet. won it with Altio a few years ago. So last, I haven't been that excited. Is he going to come out again speed. since? Just expanding on that. He's almost certainly going to run in the Dovecote at Kempton, so obviously he's going to have another test of speed rather than running up a hill or whatever. Which has but, produced Supreme winners. But it has, yeah. 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 All right. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. I'm going to give you a Cheltenham Festival winner as well. I mean, what's the Thiestes total recall? I thought Acapella Bourgeois ran well under that belt of Erden as well for a long way. I've been absolutely convinced as that Album Photo will be a back-to-back -back winner of the Gold Cup. It's always around this time. I'm thinking, who's my banker going to be? It's coming up to preview time. Who's my banker going to be? Who's my banker going to be? Album Photo. He's going to knock them out. That's for sure. That's my big call. Well, that's it for the sixth edition of What A Shout. Remember to keep getting your questions in with the comments below or on Twitter with the hashtag What A Shout. Not with Paul Keeley because. Uh, well, I'm going to go to Dublin and I'll be in the free bar lounge at the airport when you're. Uh, <laughs> so sound the air raids, yeah. lads. He's coming <laughs> over. And my thanks very much to Peter Scooter Boy and Bree. We're no me. nearer to knowing how many riddles you've actually ridden, Peter, but we'll get there one day. Maybe matter? John Randall's <laughs> spinning around, isn't he? It's going to be absolute bells the next week. Thanks, guys, for today. Don't forget to download the free racing post app on the App Store and the Play Store as well. Remember, if you're having a flutter this weekend, do it responsibly. <laughs>